Hey everybody, how's everybody doing out there today? Dr. Joseph Cipriano here. Um, just want to, uh, you know, kind of reach out to everybody and do a nice live Q and A. Um, it's been a while since I've done any type of uh, live segment. Um, there's been actually quite a bit going on, and um, you know, just kind of would love to go over things with it with everybody and. Uh, you know, obviously want to hear, you know, what's going on with everybody as well, too. So right now we're just kind of getting everything set up here. Um, my, my wife, you know, Mama Sip, she is getting all the questions and everything going here. Um, but yeah, so today I really, you know, I really want to go over everybody's comments that, uh, that's been, you know, that I've been getting. Um, it's so hard to keep up with everything. So this is one of the main reasons why I am wanting to do this with everybody. So I'm gonna have my wife kind of read off some of the comments and we're just gonna go from here. So let's see, where are we at, baby? All right, so everybody's just kind of sending their hellos. How you guys um, doing? Somebody's already cracking their neck just watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Let's see, what's up from Amsterdam? All right. Dang, dang, yeah, how are you guys doing? Thanks for your videos, dude, you're amazing. Of course, of course, I'm, I'm you know, just happy to be posting. Um, you know, I love educating people. I love just showing my passion to the entire world. So, um, to It's Me, Steph, we actually had a miscarriage. Uh, we posted that in the previous video of him adjusting me, and then I actually have the story up on my uh, YouTube channel, Mama Sip. Um, so, we are not finding out the gender. Nope. And we were actually, just so you know, we were actually having twins, um, so that kind of was a little bit of a shock to us with, with that one. All right, so there is somebody by the name USA asking, how long have you been in practice? Uh, I have been in practice for about three years now. Um, originally, when I first graduated, I went to Life University, which is out in Marietta, Georgia, uh, basically the outskirts of Atlanta. And the first position I took was in the Woodlands, Texas, which was like North Houston. And we were actually one of the largest offices in the world. We were seeing about 2,000 patients a week. So I went from, you know, being in school as a student and then got thrown into a clinic with 2,000 patients a week, you know, give or take a little bit. And um, at, that, at the one point, it was the owner and myself, so I was seeing alone a thousand patients a week for, you know, a solid year. It was crazy office, and with, with being able to adjust that many people, it was literally amazing. The amount of experience that, that I was able to get, you know, there, I was adjusting more people than, you know, people would see in 10 years. I was doing, you know, in a month. It was crazy. Alright, so somebody else by the name of Max Mueller is asking, what do you feel are the greatest benefits from having the Y-strap done? So the first time that I've had the Y-strap done was by, I would call my mentor in, in uh, the Woodlands. Honestly, it, it, it literally was like um, a manual decompression. You just felt everything release and like, like the euphoria. You were like, oh my gosh, you just felt all like the, the pressure on your nerves just you know, just be released and, and literally I stood up and, you know, for me, I'm not, you know, obviously you guys know that I'm a short guy, you know, I'm five foot seven, you know, I felt like I got off the table like I was 5'10". I mean, it was, it was crazy, you know, after having that adjustment. Okay, so somebody else is asking what state we live in. We are in Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. Um, Jody Brown, how do you feel about the pneumatic gun thing being used by chiropractors? Um, if you're talking about what, it's called the arthro stem is what I'm thinking that you're trying to say. It looks literally like, like a, a gun and it, it's almost like a little mini jackhammer. Um, honestly, I, I am a fan of the arthro stem, but I use the arthro stem usually on very young patients. Like I do have a video of my son that I posted and I use that as an adjustment on him. And then I'll use it as a little bit of a soft tissue technique as well. Um, I typically like to do adjustments manually with my hands. I, I feel like I get a lot better of an adjustment on people. And, you know, if you're coming all that way to see me, I'm going to give you the best adjustment that I can. Okay. Mr. Um, Mr. Patrick Curtis, Joseph, who are your other favorite Kairos on YouTube? Um, 
Actually, I am not gonna lie. Um, Dr. Gregory Johnson was a cool guy. I mean, he is hilarious to watch. Um, he's also got a technique just like mine. His ring dinger is just like my Y strap. Uh, they, you know, they, it's a manual decompression. So I, I love his work. You know, getting that done is a, a really good thing. But another one, which is going to be an up and comer uh, that you guys will soon find out, uh, his name is Dr. Alex Tubio. He's also in the Houston area, surprisingly. Um, he is also another great adjuster as well. So he's another one to, uh, to definitely look out for. Yep, definitely. Okay, how much schooling did you have to do by one trooper? Okay, so a lot, what, what it comes down to with chiropractic, um, you first need to have your bachelor degree and you at least need to have some type of like bio, organic chemistry, chemistry type classes. So I have my major in communications. I got my BA from Oakland University and I got a minor in biology. Um, after the BA, I have a four year, it's a doctorate of chiropractic degree. So it's another four years, it's three and a half years of schooling and then a half a year of uh, like an internship, residency type, type ordeal. So it's quite a bit of schooling and it's a lot more intense than what people think. And to be honest, it is uh, roughly about a 50% pass rate. A lot of people do drop out thinking that, you know, the program is going to be very easy and yeah, it's actually rather difficult. Okay, so... Uh, Raghavan Cheetah yep. is asking, any idea of visiting India? You know what? My goal, like, I would love to go around to different countries. Um, the one thing that I need to just make sure of is every country has different laws. Just like every state in America, we... For me to be able to adjust in different states, I not only, which I have my national boards and all my national boards are done and complete, which obviously is a good thing, but not only do you need your national boards done, you have to have state boards in each individual state. Some states require another exam. Some states just require, basically they just want money. Um, but all it, all it would come down to would be me applying to different areas. So when it comes to out of the country, um, I just have to see what boards or what needs to be done um, to do so with that. I've never really looked into India, but you know, eventually when, when we make our way around the world, like that would be one thing that I would definitely look into. That would be awesome. Okay, so Dennis Fallence is asking, I know you had mentioned a gear shop. When should we expect that? Um, I'm currently waiting a little bit with YouTube as well. The YouTube platform is coming out with a very user-friendly uh, merch store for, for creators. Um, I've had talk with a few other uh, basically like representatives to do that, but I'm trying to, to give the YouTube platform a little bit of time because I really would, you know, it's a lot more user-friendly and I really would love to just do something with them. It would make it a lot easier. Uh, you know to, to get and to reach you know I, you know all my viewers okay we have somebody asking and you widow is cracking your finger knuckles or neck bad for your body um, cracking your fingers not at all there's been actual studies done where um, there was a guy who literally cracked only one hand of his body for it was like 50 years and there was no difference from his one hand compared to the other that was not cracked. So is it more of just like it feels good? Yeah, it's more it's more of the uh, euphoria in the hand. So you got to realize your hands, the, the, the nerves aren't coming directly from the spine. So it's a little bit different. Now, when it comes to the neck, because um, I get asked this all the time, you know, oh, you know, I do this little thing myself and, you know, I adjust myself. Now, the only thing what I tell people is that what you could be doing, you know, when you go to do one of these things and just kind of uh, and like crank your neck over, you don't know exactly what vertebra you're moving. So just say your vertebra, like between C5 and C6, you know, it's, it's fixated, it's stuck right there, and that's where you need the actual adjustment. The vertebra above or the vertebra below may actually hyper uh, basically hyper move and, and hyper translate when you do one of these so you don't know if you're actually moving the correct vertebra. That's the only thing that I can kind of really say when it comes to self-adjusting. 
Um, it, it's a it's a tricky one, you know. I it, it's hard to say, but yeah, for the most time, you know, you may do it and you may feel great, or you may do it and you may be hurting extremely bad. I I always recommend you know going to a chiropractor and and getting it done professionally. Okay, so Phil is asking, when are you gonna start doing treatments outside again? Um. <laughs> I've been, so obviously you guys have seen me at the office at Palmetto Physical Medicine in Greenville. Um, I love shooting out of there. I'm able to reach obviously so many more people from in the office. Um, I'm now on the weekends trying to, to branch out a little bit more. I just did actually out of our home office. We did uh, a couple patients today, which if you guys actually go on to my Instagram page, uh, Dr. Joseph Cipriano, You'll see all the behind the scenes footage of the, of the adjustment today. And I know, especially with all my viewers, you guys are gonna love it. It is actually a fellow, it's an Instagram model based out of 20 minutes away from me, based out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. So she was, you know, definitely, you know, ecstatic to come on and, you know, do an adjustment. And, you know, I know that you guys are gonna love her, so. Um, she was can't, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, she, I mean, she's no mama sip, but, <laughs> but she, yeah, she is a very attractive young lady and you guys are definitely going to love her. So I will be posting that video later this week. We just have some editing, um, editing to do with it as well. Okay, so. I saw a, a super chat pop up. And I, man, who is Lady Luck HQ just sent over five dollars. Thank you so much, Lady Luck HQ, for your donation. Lady Luck, thank you so much. Um, Shout out to her page. Yes. Check her out. So everyone, everyone, just so you know, Lady Luck HQ, she has a um, casino slot machine page. She goes to Vegas. She goes on cruises. She goes to any different casino, and she literally has a camera with her, and she videotapes all of her as she's sitting down playing slot machine. So her page is awesome. She goes over a ton of cool things. You can see her win. You can see her lose. It's, it's actually really cool. I have had her um, on my channel as well. I've done a couple adjustments on her. So if you guys go on her page, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go a little quicker with the questions because there's a lot rolling in. Yep. Um, let me see. Somebody's telling me to tell you he's digging his beard, as do I. You guys, I love his beard. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely love the beard. Won't shave that at all. Okay. Uh, is your office shared with other medical professionals? Yes. My office has a medical doctor, has a physical therapist, has a nurse practitioner, um, has physical therapy assistants, and there's a massage therapist. So we treat everything um, as a whole well-rounded type effect. So if you come into the office, you'll meet with me, the chiropractor, and then you'll meet with the nurse practitioner, and we combine our care plans together. You know, there's a, like a part chiropractic, part physical therapy, part massage therapy, and, and we give patients the option of having the best all-rounded type care. Um, we're not, you know, interflicting with each other. Uh, we work together with the physical therapist, with the chiropractic, so it all, you know, we, we want, the whole goal is for the patient to get better, and, you know, I know the benefits of physical therapy, I know the benefits of chiropractic, so instead of being conflicting ideas, we combine everything together, which is an amazing effect for the patients. Okay, how did you get interested in being a chiro? Um, so, mainly, it was years ago, I wanted to get into some type of healthcare uh, type position. I didn't know exactly what at the time and I was a nurse assistant and I was working on a med surge floor years ago and Honestly, all my patients were you know like going through you know had like diabetic neuropathy and were about to lose a limb You know a foot an ankle below the knee amputation and it was just crazy to see these type of people going through um, you know, th this type of surgery, and I wanted to get into a field where I could actually make an impact and make a difference if I got to them early enough. So I felt with the chiropractic field, you know, chiropractic with health, with nutrition, with uh, just everything, all aspects of, you know, with, you know, organic and just everything, the well-rounded aspect of it, um, I really just wanted to make an impact on other people's lives and keep them healthy. 
Okay, Yamil Mayo is asking, if I twisted my ankle very bad three years ago and never went to a doctor, still feeling pain, do you think chiropractic adjustment would help? It's an up or down one with that. Um, I would definitely want to put you through a, a set of orthopedic tests. I, wanna, I would want to see exactly where and what could be, what could be causing it. Um, you know, because technically, I know with twisting the ankle, I mean, it could be something directly that was torn, maybe. Maybe one of the, the sheath that hold in the tendons could have been torn. Um, there's quite a bit that could be happening. I would definitely go with the Cairo route at first, um, have them go through an array of orthopedic tests from there. You know, if you're not getting any type of relief, definitely, definitely, definitely get the MRI done on that ankle. Um, now that you probably have to go back to your primary care physician to get referred out, you know, it's a quite a process But at least with getting an MRI you would know exactly if there were any tears in the body um, And then how to you know how to correct that and, and your next steps what that would be Okay, Bruce is saying if I click my back and actually find ways to click different parts of my body Is it honestly bad or am I doing it right in some way? You know that it, it's a slippery slope with that one. Um, it, I mean, it can be right, but you know the thing is, you may move something that actually doesn't need to be moved. Um, sometimes it may be like the vertebra above or the vertebra below that may actually need to be moved. So that's the only hard part with it. Um, I can tell you right now. So the videos that I've done today. One girl, the Instagram model, she's been adjusted by uh, Cairo her entire life, and you guys will see the reaction of after seeing me. And then the other video that I did was on her videographer that was here, which has never been adjusted in his entire life, and just the way that he felt after the adjustment, he couldn't believe that's how you feel after getting an adjustment. Well, because you physically adjusted her with your hands, whereas her uh, chiropractor has been adjusting her with just an activator, she said, so. Correct. Obviously, there would be a, you know, a big, huge difference. Correct, when, when you come and see me, I make sure that one, that you know, you're, you're gonna get a full body adjustment from head to toe, and you're gonna know that things have been moved, and you're gonna actually feel it. I, you know, I'm not one of those chiropractors that you know, gonna have you come for 500 visits and like, I don't do that. I, you know, I believe that, you know, I, I can do an adjustment and, and see you in less visits and still get the same results, actually get even better results than, than people out there. Just everyone has their own way of practicing and this is how I practice, so. So Combat Craftsman just sent us $9.99. Thank you so much for that. Combat Craftsman. Thank you, thank you. My family and I love you all. I'm coming for an adjustment. Perfect, perfect. I can't wait to we see you. We would love to meet you guys. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I, I love, you know, just with opening up this channel, the amount of people that have came to the office. Um, it, it is literally, it's crazy. You know, it really is. I, I love it. I love being able to share my passion with everybody out there. Yeah, thanks again. That was awesome of you. Okay, on to the next question. Adam Usher, what kind of device would you recommend for doing our own spinal decompression? My dad has a thing that you could lock your feet in and hang upside down and it does nothing for me personally. My dad has the same one, that's hilarious. Um, so what, what that does, not that, not that those are bad, what that does, because actually my parents have the same thing in their basement. <laughs> of course. And, and literally, so it, it's an inversion table is what it's called. And what it does, you stand in straight, you hook your, your ankles in, and you literally flip upside down. And the whole point of it, you know, is to take pressure off. But the only thing that is different with something like that is it's locking you in at the ankles. Now, I'm gonna actually show a video uh, in the next few days when I get back to the office, um, we have an inversion table, but instead of holding you in at the ankles, it's actually gonna hold you in at the hips, and it's gonna flip you upside down from holding you in at the hips. So then that, that pressure is actually gonna pull from the hips and that lumbar spine. So it's a little bit different than that old school ankle inversion table. Okay, Ian Nosa Costa. I probably butchered that, I'm sorry. Uh, what is really happening when joints pop or crack? Is that air in them or is it just cartilage? Um, so what it is, it's the, literally, it's in between the joints, it's a, a synovial fluid, and, and sometimes when you, when you make an adjustment, you may actually not get a pop or a crack type sound. 
Um, yeah, it's just gases that build up, and it's, it's between the synovial joints, and then, and then they'll get released, and you may get that popping or cracking sound. And it's almost as if you're, you know, cracking your knuckles as well. Just the only difference is your spine is a lot closer to your ears, so it's going to sound a lot louder to, you know, to your own body. Okay, so Got Your Six said the work you do for people is amazing. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much. Uh, and then JT said, do you know any chiros in the D.C. area who use thoracic lifts, thoracic distraction, and the band? I'm finding out chiros either won't do those techniques or don't know where, uh, what they are. Um, actually, you're not the first person who's asked me about uh, chiros in the D.C. area. I've had multiple people ask me about that area. I don't, to be honest, I really don't know anyone out there. And also, the techniques that I do aren't taught in school. I was taught from the Cairo in the Woodlands about, you know, like why Y axis distraction. I was taught from him. So a lot of the things that I learned were either from him or were from seminars or from just old Cairo's, you know, from the past, you know, that I've been practicing like 40, 50 years. Um, a lot of things that they teach at school, they teach you how to get through your, you know, your exams and to, you know, and to be licensed. But learning an actual adjustment is, a, is different. You don't get your hands on that many people. Um, definitely, chiros with experience are the, really the ones that you want to go to. Now, I got lucky that I got to an office where I was seeing 2,000 patients a week where any chiro out there who hears that number is like, oh my gosh, how do you see that? And trust me, it was, it was a crazy office and I was like a chicken with my head cut off running around, that's how crazy it was. But the experience that I got from that office can never be taken away from me, it, it was amazing. It was literally life changing. Okay, so Edison wants to know what you tell your barber and what products do you use? <laughs> um, so my barber actually is a female and her name is Tara. Um, I actually I haven't seen her in a while and actually she would be the one who knows the products that I use and what I'm using now are very cheap things from like Walmart that I buy um, <laughs> which she would not approve of but I haven't seen her and I don't know when's the last time you've seen her? Well she's still up in Michigan. Yeah she, she's, a, yeah she's a friend of mine from Michigan and yeah she was uh, kind of been my barber for the longest time. Now I just kind of do like little little fades on the side every now and then and just keep the top, you know, as you can tell, really long, but, um, Okay, so yeah. Jody Brown is asking, is there anything specific you would suggest for somebody with bone disease? Um, it depends what, you know, on what type of bone disease we're talking about. Are we talking like an osteoporosis? Um, are we talking about any type of uh, vitamin D deficiency? That, you know, things like that I'm just not sure of. Uh, a lot of that may be more dietary type issues, um, on depending on the amount of calcium, the amount of vitamin D, uh, things like that. So it, it's a little bit different. It's a hard question to kind of answer without having or doing like a, a you know an examination and getting more of a, a health history. Okay, so YouTube Connected is asking, what do I need if I visit your office? What do you need? Um, your ID, I guess. I mean, no, there, there's not really much that you need. Um, yourself, bring yourself. Yeah, you bring yourself is, is really it. It's, um, I would say the first visit at the office would roughly take about an hour because you're going to come in, you're going to meet with our case manager. Uh, the case manager, she's going to go over all the steps of the process of what's going to get done. After that, you'll meet with the nurse practitioner. Nurse practitioner, she'll do her portion of the uh, health history exam, and then you'll meet with me. Um, if you're coming from a ways, I will, so I'll adjust on the first visit, but only until, so after I take the x-rays, there's two things that I'm looking for to make sure that you don't have. If you have a fracture or if you have a tumor, I obviously will not adjust on the first visit, and I may have to refer you out um, you know to somewhere else, but if you have no fracture if you have no tumor if it's just misalignment issues I will you know be able to adjust you right then and there that day Okay, so combat craftsman is um, saying I'd love to meet you and your family and get an adjustment before I deploy Would that be possible within this year? 
Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, absolutely. If you guys actually look at my, yeah, is it my last video? Yeah, my last video. He was an Army infantryman. Yeah, I was. Him and his wife came over here, and, you know, we've been talking back and forth uh, via email, and we finally found a date and a time, and he came out, and I was able to do an adjustment on him, and he wasn't sure if I was able to find anything. He was afraid of that. He didn't think you would be able to pop anything. He said, I, I don't pop. I don't, I don't crack. Like, you can't ever hear anything. So he was shocked when yes, you and shook him. <laughs> so if you guys literally watched my last video that I just posted, um, when I mean the, the noises, the cavitations were extremely loud. I did not only his neck, his back, his low back, but I did his feet and ankle as well. And everything just was super loud yeah everything went really well but yeah so i to answer your question again yes 100 percent, i would be able to um you know in, invite you over and meet you be able to adjust you of course uh, you can always email him yes please that's the best way of contacting is by email mm -hmm. if you you know if you're looking for an appointment or anything like that at dr joseph cipriano at gmail.com correct Okay, so Lady Luck HQ wants to tell or wants you to tell uh, us about your trip to Haiti. Ah, yes, she is one that kind of has a little bit of a background and knows about that. So years ago, um, right before I was about to graduate, I did a trip to Haiti. So we did a mission trip out there and I mean it was quite an experience. The amount of people that I got to see, the literally the things that you see, especially in a third world country, were literally I like an eye opener. You you did not realize the you know the way that people live in a a different country. It was crazy to think about, but that was a way of being able to learn and and to practice on my moves and adjustments. Because like I was saying, especially when you're a student in school. You're not trying to be mean, but you're not really that great of an adjuster. You know, it takes a little bit of time and, you know, it really comes down to that first position that you take when you graduate. I luckily picked an office where, you know, we were seeing 2,000 patients a week and it was an amazing experience. But yeah, I, I will definitely get further into the Haiti story. And In fact, you should do a video on it. Just combine your pictures and your, you know, just talk a little bit about it, what you got to do, who you got to meet. Well, I'll get cool. a little further into that later just because I have, you know, what can be going on soon. Um, I will definitely let, fill everyone in when I, you know, get the go ahead on what may be happening. Um, definitely some cool things that are going on and the chiropractic realm, especially with me, um, and just the people that I've met through having the YouTube channel. So this one just cracked me up. Uh, Jason Alleman okay. just asked if I'm gonna Y-strap the dock. If you? Yeah. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, my wife here is not a licensed chiropractor, <laughs> has not had any school or any actual training in it. Um, now I have trained other doctors on using the Y strap, um, and I have had others do it. And it, it, like any other skill, it takes a little bit of time to to learn it and to do it. Um, you know, you got to learn. You got to you know realize when the patient is relaxing, and you want to you know do your thrust and your pull at specific times, and then obviously the intensity and in, in, in the pull itself. So there are some things that, you know, are quite specific when using that technique. Okay. So Marl wants to know if you're a rapper and if you could rap for us. <laughs> Dude, I am not a rapper at all. Um, yeah, I, I'm terrible. I'm, my lyrics and my rhymes <laughs> would not be good at all. Okay. Uh, Kenny's 223 says, do you recommend any self adjustments for upper back and neck? I drive a lot and work from my car. So a lot of things with that I know, and I've had people that have been like on the road a lot. One thing, some main things to, to, to follow with that, um, a lumbar support in the seat is always a great thing to have. I know you kind of wonder, you know, my neck up here, you're talking about not your lumbar spine, but helping out the lumbar spine, especially during a long road trip, will actually help down, help, sorry, up here in the neck. 
So having correct posture when you're sitting, making sure, especially as a guy, not having that wallet in your back pocket, that can also create a lot of issues. Um, but one thing that I can do in the next couple videos, I'll come up and I'll create uh, the exercises that I give to patients at home stretches and therapies. I'll go ahead and I'll start adding some stretches and at home therapies, you know, in some of my videos just so, you know, there are, you know, some things for you guys to do at home as well. Okay, Grace Flo, how can I do ring dingers on myself at home? <laughs> Uh, not recommended. Yeah, definitely not recommended. It, it really is a very powerful technique. Um, Dr. Johnson, obviously, he has his own specific table set up for that. You know, that locks you in at the hips. Um, yeah, definitely not recommended because you don't want to over distract on a, on a move like that. Definitely want that done by a, a licensed professional. Uh, Rod Lozano, do you recommend inversion table? Um, I do recommend inversion table, but couple things with that one um, depending on the age depending on you know if there's any heart disease any issues like that you want to be a little leery because you don't want to flip yourself upside down if you're somebody who um, has you know like any type of bad heart disease any type of issues like that because the blood is gonna rush obviously down towards your head um, also make sure and always do an inversion with somebody near you that's all you need is to be flipped upside down and for some reason the table doesn't want to go back down forward. There's crazy horror stories that I've heard of inver you know, with inversion table. Yeah, I see your look in your eyes. Yeah, there are things that actually can happen. So always watch yourself, you know, make sure that you're with somebody else when doing it. And definitely start off at a very short amount of time, just a few minutes. And, and, and it's like, it's like um, working out. You start low and you gotta build your tolerance up. So don't just like jump in and think that you're gonna do 20 minutes flipped upside down. Is it dangerous to step on someone's back to crack it? <laughs> I 100% do not recommend stepping on anybody's back to crack it. I used to do that before I met you. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't know any better. I know. And, and actually, um, the videographer that I adjusted today, he was telling me that he would have his mother walk on his back because of that same thing. The reason I don't recommend that is your ribs are connected onto your spine and if you have somebody that steps, they may actually break a rib and puncture your lung. Um, and to be honest, if that happens, you know, there's not really much you can do for a broken rib. Um, ice it and that's, it, it, it's not a fun thing. You don't want to break a rib. You don't want to have somebody walk on your back. You know, I would 100% go to a chiropractor and let them crack your back. It'll be a thousand times better than having somebody walk on it. Okay, so beside the dying fire uh, is asking, are you ever coming to Long Island? Um, I would definitely look into Long Island. I've had multiple multiple people ask me about coming out to like New York, New Jersey area. Um, I That's one thing, I just gotta check about the, um, the, the licensings about it. And you know, as long as I can get that um, anytime soon. I would I would love to come out there. I would love to come to different areas and actually even travel around the US and I would set up, you know, like a tour. Um, you know, let me, I, I want to ask you guys, let me know, would that be a cool idea if I was able to tour around different states and different cities? And, get like a um, temporary license? Yeah, possibly get a temporary license. I could always see about that. So let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in. And I could let you know tour dates of when I'm going to be in what city and, and let you guys know. Let me know if that's an idea that, that you guys would like. Okay. Yeah, already. Um, let me see. DL Averdy is asking, what's your official job title? Um, I mean, technically, you could chiropractor, chiropractic doctor, chiropractic physician, um, any, any one of the above. Um, you know, my degree, if you always see at the end of my, you know, my name, DC, meaning doctor of chiropractic. Oh, one thing that I do want to touch on, which I find hilarious, but so many people out there, you know, that are like, you know, they leave messages on my page like, oh, you're not a real doctor, you're not a medical doctor. And, and the answer is no, I am not a medical doctor. A medical doctor degree is an MD, or they may do, you know, like a, a PhD. But, you know, I am a doctor of chiropractic. And what people don't realize, like even a lawyer, a lawyer's degree is a doctor of law. 
technically they are a doctor or you may get a you know like a college professor who actually has a doctorate in you know like rhetoric or something like that they're still a doctor the the term doctor actually comes down to what the degree is the advanced level of the degree now the term that people don't really put into place is medical doctor means md a medical doctor you're at a hospital you're a medical doctor where there are so many different types of doctors in the world not every doctor is a medical doctor just wanted to throw that one out there because i've been finding that you know those comments funny um i definitely get a get a kick out of out of reading <laughs> yeah i definitely get a kick out of all the comments you know that are left on the page all right so da, 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 charisma xp uh, why when i twist my scrotum does my hip pop <laughs> <laughs> I that one you, you got me baffled on that one I don't I don't know unfortunately I don't, I don't think I can help you with that one all right uh, Dennis balance are you able to take patients that don't live in South Carolina yeah I have a lot of patients that drive in even from like North Carolina from Atlanta um, I even had a family from Austria uh, fly on it was a family of five that I saw all the way from Austria so they flew even from out of country um, you know, I've been in touch with people in New Jersey, with people in London. Um, yeah, I've been I've been seeing patients from all over the world. Okay, so I'm I'm passing the super chat from Combat Craftsman again. I just want to throw this out here. Uh, go ahead and email Dr. Joe at drjosephcipriano at gmail.com. Get a hold of us through there, and we'll schedule something for you. Okay. Perfect. Um. G4BO, hey, I'm interested in being a chiropractor. In a chiropractor, what should I study in when I go to a university? Um, so I would definitely do a, you know, you could almost do a physical therapy degree. You could do um, any type of bio type degree. You can do even what I did, a major in communication and a minor in biology. All of that. Just make sure and look at the prerequisites um, that you need to get in. And to be honest, a lot of doctorate programs, they offer a, um, especially at Life University where I went, which was out in Atlanta, Georgia, they offer like a expedited bachelor degree program where you can obtain your bachelor degree in two years instead of four years, but it's a f obviously a full year round. But there are different routes, just, you know, make sure and look into them. Werther Taylor, sometimes my neck is locked. What, what does that mean? Do I need adjustments? Um, more than, I mean, it, it's always hard to say. I'm gonna always respond with something like that is more than likely you would, but um, you know, I always go through and I do a complete you know, evaluation. I'll do you know, between ranges of motion, orthopedic tests, um, you know, obviously pain scales, things like that. These are issues that I'll first, you know, um, address with you, and then after that, you know, with taking X-rays and films, then we'll really be able to see what's going on and, and if there is anything misaligned. Okay, hi, Low King. How did you both meet? Actually, we met from a mutual friend. Um, he is—he's actually the other chiropractor that I told you guys that you need to start following. His name is Dr. Alex Tubio. He's in Texas. He's in Texas as well. Um, he introduced the two of us together and as years ago what it was was she just wanted a very nice guy with okay. or how is okay. it, it okay. going? so basically I was in an I was in a four-year relationship I just got out of it and I was talking to our mutual friend as we were working out and I just kind of you know happened to tell him like why can't I find a nice guy with a nice beard and he's like well I just so happened to know a buddy of yeah. mine you know so he kind of connected us through uh, Instagram and this one over here adds me doesn't message me for like two weeks I'm like anyways you know uh, but eventually you know we started talking and getting to know one another and just kind of happened to fall in love and yeah, it just kind of went from there. Yeah, it definitely went right from there. But yeah, so it was actually uh, a mutual friend is how we met. All right. Do, do, do. Uh, what's up, Dr. Wolverine? Uh, death trap for hunted. Uh, King, she came for an appointment. When they, no, he cannot date his patients. Yeah, no, no. She was not a patient at all. 
Um, oh, hold on, let me do this one. There we go, yeah. Uh, try hard. Try hard seven is rounding shoulders and upper back slouching critical for chiropractic work. Um, I would say, yeah, a lot of the times when a patient does walk into the office, you know, no matter what, and actually she knows whenever we're out in public, I look at people's posture, if they have like rounded shoulders, arch, you know, I, these are things that are key that I look at, or I look at their hips, I look at how they're walking, I look at how their, their gait cycle is, how their legs are moving when they're walking. It's, it's crazy just how my mind works and just how I view everything and every person, but yeah, I, I always look at, at everything like that on all types of aspects. So yeah, rounded shoulders, poor posture, yeah, those are the things that I definitely look for. Okay, do you know any good California chiropractors? Um, out in Cali, not personally, actually. Um, but I will let you know that Cali is an area or a state that I'm looking to, you know, do a couple collaborations with uh, some people and definitely looking to get out there. Um, just kind of trying to see what the process is with getting a license out there. Um, it always takes a little bit of time trying to get licensed in different areas. Unfortunately, it's not like the quickest process, whatever, but um, I will let everyone know when or if I am gonna be going out to different states. And actually, going back to the collaborations that you were talking about that you were looking to do in California, yep. if you are located in South Carolina and you have you know, some sort of a business or um, like YouTube channel, fitness channel, mm -hmm. anything, anything like that. Just any anywhere that you are wanting to promote or grow your channel. Um, you know, I've been, I've been blessed to have so many followers and so many people just respond to to my page, and I really want to help other people out. So if there's people out there that have, you know, a fitness page, uh, just anything that that they would love to grow their social media on. Um, I obviously I would love to help um, as you guys will see uh, Lauren Ashton that we had here she has uh, you know she's an Instagram model and she's got uh, quite a bit of a channel going on so you guys will definitely get to to meet her and see exactly what she has going on and you know uh, just things like that are, are I'm just trying to collab and just you know get to get to help everybody out okay so uh, can you alleviate back pain from surgery? That is definitely a tough one. Um, it, one, will depend what type of surgery, uh, depending on if it's like a spinal fusion, if it's things like that, it, it may be unable to. You may have to go more of a physical therapy route, but um, because I don't have a, a good enough health history, it's kind of hard to say. Okay, USA, is the Y-axis strap on equal process as the ring dinger deal with the twisted towel and is both safe, are both safe? Yes, both of them, both of them are definitely safe. Um, they, yeah, they, they're, they're the same type of technique. They're, they're both a manual decompression in the spine and it's not a technique that's actually taught in schools at all which is, it, it, just because it's so powerful, it's something that uh, a doctor would have to learn at a seminar or from like an old time doctor. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one of the, the best adjustments I've ever experienced. And I only recommend things that I personally have done myself. Okay, uh, Gabrielle Coffey said, I love your videos and your practice. Much love you guys. Jesus loves you both so much and died for your sins. We do believe that. Thank you, Gabrielle. Yes, thank you so much for that. Okay, Dr. C has a nice butt in those jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think so too. Well, thank you. All right. Um, are you sure you didn't get the ring dinger from Dr. Gregory Johnson? No, no. Actually, when I was in Houston, I had no idea. I did. I wasn't on YouTube at the time. I had no idea who he was. I was practicing at an office in the Woodlands, which is actually like just about a half hour north of Houston. Um, and it was a doctor over there was where I learned the Y strap. And just so everyone knows, the Y strap is a part of what's called the Pettibon technique, P-E-T-T-I-B-O-N. And the Pettibon technique has been around for years, um, actually, and has been around for longer than the ring dingers. So, 
Um, but I'm not I'm not trying to you know step foot on anything. The ring dinger is still a great adjustment. They're both powerful. Adjustments. Yeah, they're both powerful, but they're you know they're they are different techniques. Okay, so Dennis Fallence uh, sent over a super chat. Thank you so much, Dennis, for that. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, he said, thank you for answering my questions and doing the live broadcast. Bring on the USA tour. You, you know what? I, you know, we've been talking about it. I would love to do it. Um, Heck yeah. You know, I, what I would want to know, and you know, I'm gonna go through and read through all these comments. Um, you know, throughout the rest, you know, when I do, you know, kind of close things down with you guys. But definitely let me know what cities you would, you know, you would like me to come to. And you know, the more people that are responding to different cities, um, you know, those would be the cities that I would want to do. Um, you know adjustments at so I'll definitely take a look especially you know start something off small maybe maybe 10 city tour type thing and go from there and uh, you know I would definitely let everybody know what cities it would be but as long as you know I get you know you guys leave messages on what city and you know I would be able to spend a weekend in each city Okay, so Hilo King, what do you think of that viral video of three Asians doing Cairo on a girl <laughs> with really extreme pulls and pushes? I know the exact video that you're that you're talking mm -hmm. about. The crazy one where they're Those like, are crazy. Where they're jumping and like <laughs> you get one guy pulling an arm, one guy pulling <laughs> dude. I, I mean, yeah, as you can tell that it's filmed somewhere, you know, not in America. Obviously. Um, <laughs> And I, I, I do not recommend that at all. I find that rather hilarious, but also a little cringing at times because they're, they're, those people, you know, those are not adjustments that should be made. Um, you know, that person, whoever it was, probably felt very sore after, <laughs> after that. All right. Um... But yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> USA said never got the end story of your spider bite. That was crazy. Um Honestly, I it things ended up going away. I, I iced I did that uh, cold laser therapy um, I did your your typical rest uh, compress ice elevate your rice r-i-c-e um, and it, it started going away, but it was it was really crazy because you know, I did get you know a fever um, obviously, you guys saw like how the rash and how everything was spreading on my ankle. Oh, you had the chills. Yeah, I had the chills. I had night sweats. Like it was, it was bad. I didn't know. Like we were about to go to the ER and. What was that essential oil I put on it as well? You put a lavender, lavender? oil. Yeah, you put a lavender oil on it like in the evening, and you did what was it? The uh, apple cider vinegar. Yes. Compress as well. And then you did the little light thing. I forget what it's called. Cold laser therapy. Yeah, so I did multiple different things. It did go away, but I'm telling you, that was like the most pain I, I've really experienced in a long time. Hey, my cousin Angela. Uh, love what you're doing here, Doc. Keep it up. Would love to see you and your wife in Northern California for the future tour. <laughs> well, you know we'll that. We'll make it work. We'll make yeah, it work. You know that, you know, if we're doing a tour and we're going to come to California, you know <laughs> we need a place to stay. By the way, happy birthday, girl. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> happy birthday. Okay. Um, Chad Hollis, my feet tingle ever so often. Could this be from uh, with my back? I do lift a lot. Um, so you're saying feet, meaning plural. More than likely, it is going to be responding from something in your back. Now, if you would have told me it was only one foot, then I would have said it possibly could be an ankle issue, a knee issue, but that it's two feet. you got to realize all your nerves are coming from your spine, and they stem out and they go into your feet. So if you have some type of issue, just say like in somewhere in your lumbar spine from L1 to L5 or even into your sacrum, that can be the, the, um, the cause that actually can be affecting your feet. Um, that it is, both your feet definitely sounds like a nerve irritation. Okay. Now, granted, I don't know exactly what level, you would definitely have to get checked to see specifically what level, and you'd wanna get uh, at least films taken on the low back and sacrum. Okay, so no flex zone said, do you recommend soft mattress, firm mattress for sleeping on the floor for posture? I've slept on the floor for two nights now, and it's been great. Did your wife get pissed at you? <laughs> Did she kick you off the bed? Um, actually, so we have a firm mattress and we will always recommend a firm mattress. Um, yeah, it's, we can't do a soft. I think, I, you know, we bought, 
We ended up, we bought that, that other one that we put in our guest oh, room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so our poor, our poor guest, I don't know. It's when you put your hand the down. The gel ones, it's one of them gel ones. I don't know name brands and I'm not going to, I'm not going to yeah. say any name brands or anything, but um, no, personally, I like firm, firm mattresses and, and when waking up in the morning compared to a firm mattress to a soft mattress, my spine gets a lot better to sleep and I wake up like refreshed on a firm mattress, whereas on a very soft mm -hmm. mattress, I tend up like, I don't know why, I'm in so much pain. Yep. So my personal opinion, I do not recommend any type of soft mattress at all. And speaking of mattresses, we actually got a chiropractic mattress. Uh, that one mattress is made of 700 different mattresses and we will be doing a video on it uh, sometime soon. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll worry we'll about it. We'll mention it. Yeah, we'll mention it then on that. But yeah, it's definitely when it comes to mattresses, I always go with something a little bit more firm. Okay, so Jason Alleman, uh, the real estate agent from Massachusetts, said, yeah. How come there are so few chiros that adjust extremities? Could find a single one or can't, couldn't can't find Can't find a single one in my yes. area. Um, you know, I, I don't know because even in school, you do learn how to do extremity adjusting. Um, now, granted, it's not that extensive when you're in school, you learn how to do it, but um, from there, it really comes down to, you know, each individual chiropractor's preference. Now, me, I've, I've always felt if, if I'm going to get an adjustment and, you know, if somebody comes in and they have, you know, wrist and hand pain or if they're having, you know, uh, elbow pain or shoulder pain, granted, the first thing that I always go to is the spine you know, because that's where the nerves are coming out directly. But, you know, just say if it's a, a wrist pain, I'm gonna check, there's other areas besides the spine where there can be some type of compression. So I check the shoulder, I check the elbow, and I check the wrist. So I may do an adjustment on a shoulder, on an elbow, and on a wrist, and obviously the neck. So it really comes down to individual chiropractors and their preference. Um, technically, that's why I get a lot of people that come to see me is because um, like the foot and ankle adjustments that I do, um, just things that I learn, you know, from different doctors and it, it, it's, it's things that actually work. So that, that's kind of how I work. Okay, Adam Usher, is it dangerous to break dance on someone's back? And can you recommend a chiropractor in Arkansas that does spinal decompression? Um, definitely, let's not break dance on anybody's back. Probably not the best thing for you. Um, this spinal decompression, it's such a hard thing because I have so many people that ask me about that. Um, you know, I, I didn't really know too many that do it. Um, and, and, and it's more of a thing where you'd want to ask or call around different offices and ask if they do a manual decompression adjustment. Um, they would at least know what you're talking about, um, or they should. If they don't know what a manual decompression adjustment is, I wouldn't be going to that to that Cairo. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of them, if they do do that type of technique, and, and there are many that do a technique like that. Some do that same technique. You can do it using your hands. You know where I use the Y strap that hooks onto the base of the occiput? There are chiros that use their hand and hook onto the base of the occiput and put their other hand on the chin and pull and do that same technique, which it does work good. Um, just I feel with my Y strap, um, you know, I get a lot more leverage when, when using it and I don't have to, I don't like anything around my neck, especially the front of my neck and with having a beard, I like, even this shirt is really tight around my, like, I just, I don't like anything around my neck, so I don't like, you know, like how the ring dinger with the towel or the manual with the hand, but those type of techniques can be done differently. But yeah, there are very few and far, far uh, to come between the chirals that actually do those techniques. So Sadiq said, can drinking eight liters of water daily damage your kidneys? Uh, it's going to depend on... Um, you know, if you say, if you're asking about that, you know, then it comes down to, well, you know, are you working out and how much are you working out? Are you in an area where you're sweating a lot? Are you, um, you know, it comes a lot. You, you gotta, you gotta look at the, you know, the amount that you're uh, digest or ingesting compared to what you're actually sweating out. Um, so those are kind of things that you want to look at. 
typically I like to, you know, you like I drink my my weight um, in, in in ounces is kind of like the almost like the standard, but um, everyone is a little bit different, and especially when you're dealing with people that have kidney type issues, you know, you really want to be a little, you know, kind of self conscious when it comes to that. So Adam Salazar said, I need an adjustment. How much do you charge for a session? Um, so at the office, what we do, it is um, depending, well, one, it's going to depend on insurance. If you have insurance, you know, it may just be a, a simple copay. But if you're just, say, coming from out of state or you don't have an insurance, how we charge is for the initial exam, the, you know, the... Uh, the ortho test, the x-rays and everything, it is $100 and then it is a $40 for the adjustment. But because we have so many people coming from out of state or, you know, we realize that not everyone has insurance, we offer um, three adjustments a month for $59. So basically that breaks down to $20 an adjustment. But we make sure we put everyone through the, um, the normal, the initial consult. And the reason we do that is, you know, we want to make sure and check to see, you know, those main, those red flags. If there is a tumor or if there is a fracture, you know, those are red flags and you don't want to be adjusting with things like that. Okay. Uh, Richie is asking, is it good to crack your own back? And then Adam is asking, how can you crack your own back? Um, no, I mean, those are kind of tough questions to, to answer because technically, yeah, I mean, you know, you can push or you can turn or you can twist yourself or you can do one of these type things. And yeah, you know, you can make bones move. You can, you can feel, you can hear the joints popping, you can hear, but how, I, you know, what I always talked about, especially I answered earlier is you don't know if you're actually moving the correct joint that needs to be moved. You know, you may have like a C5 is where you're subluxated or where there's uh, nerve interference and you keep doing one of these type, type adjustments and you may be moving C4 every time and it may feel good and it may feel good, but then you keep doing it, you may uh, hypermobilize that C4 joint where that C5 is the one that actually needs to be adjusted. And actually that reminds me, a lot of people always comment Oh, you look like you're doing the same adjustment on every person, you know, that come come in with different issues. Go ahead and um, so yeah, explain so, that. So a lot of a lot of the times when I do an adjustment, um, the same adjustment, especially when it comes to the neck, I may be doing something on C two or C four or T one or T three. Now you gotta realize the adjustments. You know, they're not much difference. You know, it's just hand placement and where I, you know, distract and, and do techniques like that. But, you know, if I'm adjusting a T1 or a T2, I mean, especially on film, you're not gonna notice any difference because the adjustment, the, the actual, the force is still the same thing, except I'm just, you know, my hand may be up a, a half an inch higher from one adjustment to the other. Okay, so Portland Hill has two questions. Uh, number one, would you recommend being a chiropractor? And number two, do you like the ring dinger? Um, so two things. All right, first off, yes. I mean, I love my profession. I love what I do. Um, I love that when I leave work, I have so many people that after an adjustment look at me and they're like, oh my gosh, like that was amazing. And, and it really is a good feeling knowing that you helped somebody that day. So that is always a great thing. Um, but the one thing about going to chiropractic school, my student loans are close to 300,000. So you gotta take the good with the bad. It's very expensive. And if you're not owning your own practice, if you're just trying to work for somebody, if you don't have that drive to you know, be a, you know, a small business owner and, and, you know, and want to take the, you know, the time to build up a practice and do all that, you're never going to make money as an associate doctor. I, I, to be honest, I don't care who you are. You know, I don't care if you're an associate and you're making 100000 somewhere. You got to realize that owner is probably making a million somewhere. That's the only way you're going to make money is by being and, you know, owning a chiropractic office. So if you have the drive to become a chiropractor, it, you know, that's such a great skill set. But you need to make sure you need to have the, the mindset as you know uh, as a you know a business person to be able to really um, 
like expedite and really to be able to be financially stable. Okay, um, Timo Richter, hello dog, why don't you ever adjust shoulder or elbow in your videos? Um, so there are, Timo Richter, all right, there are some videos where I do adjustments. There was one, and specifically, it was on the, um, I was like the, uh, the severe neck patient that I had, she was having issues in her shoulder, and I do a, um, a drop technique with, with the shoulders. So on that shoulder adjustment, I literally, I, you know, it's a, a drop technique, you know, up top here. So I'll crank up the table and I do a stabilization drop with the shoulder going, you know, placing it back into the, the glenohumeral joint. So I do have a couple um, shoulder adjustments. The only thing, you know, I would love to do more, but every patient that I actually have that I talk about that is filmed, I'm not just gonna make up like a, a complaint for somebody just to do something. I, you know, I'm gonna do with, you know, what, what I have in front of me. And another thing is a lot of his patients who come in with different kinds of issues actually don't wanna be filmed. Mm -hmm. um, so. A lot of people don't want to be filmed. Trust me, that's that's one thing. I get people from all over, and you know they ask me before they're like, "Do I have to get filmed to be seen by you?" And you know I make sure I let them know, "No, you do not have to be filmed." Okay, Tony Torres is asking if you could please recommend anyone in his area, El Paso, Texas, that is skilled and qualified in using the Y strap. Um. Well, I'm trying to think of location wise of where El Paso is. Um, Obviously, well, Houston, you have, well, I'm, I'm not, just to be honest, my geography is, isn't the greatest. Um, I know Houston, uh, you've got, even uh, even Dr. Johnson that does the ring dinger out there. You've got Dr. Alex Tuvio. Um, you have the clinic where I was, Abundant Life Chiropractic over in the Woodlands, Texas. You know, they do the, the Y-strap technique. So there are some, you know, a few locations over there, but I'm not sure about in El Paso, Texas. Okay, uh, Butch is asking, can you be too big for an adjustment? No, no, I've had some big guys. Um, so my wife is uh, Ukrainian Russian, and I've it was a, a family friend that I adjusted. He was a, a bigger gentleman. He had quite a large uh, midsection on him. Uh, you know, I would say a good, you know, like 370, 380 is what he probably weighed. Big guy. Um, dude, I rocked his world. The bigger the guy, the easier it is for me to adjust. Granted, I'm not gonna be able to put you in many different positions because, you know, let's be honest, you're not gonna be able to, you know, flip on your stomach, flip on your back, lay on your side. It's gonna be a little bit more basic, but I guarantee you that I'll deliver the best adjustment possible on any type of bigger person. Okay, Nathan B, my heels are always sore as if bruised, but never injured. It also, whenever I straighten my feet as pointing down, my feet will always cramp up. Is there something that could be corrected with chiropractic care? Um, it very well could be. Uh, a couple of things, you know, I have had a lot of people now come in and see me for the uh, foot and ankle adjustments uh, specifically. So I would definitely, with someone like you, is what it sounds like, you know, I would definitely really want to check out the low back and see if there's any uh, hip discrepancies that may be causing some type of issues going down to the feet. But also I would adjust not only the low back and the hips, but I would definitely adjust the feet, the calcaneus, you know, all the, the navicular, the talus. I would adjust all the different bones in the, foot, in the feet and ankle as well. Okay, Jay Schmidt, can you recommend any home exercises for, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Oh, for Dowager's Hump. So, Dowager's Hump, what that is, it's usually, it comes in right up, right at the top of the thoracic spine. And it's, you know that usually, to be honest, it's almost like that little old hump that you see on old women, you know, when they get older and they get that big. Um, so that right there, one thing that I, how, what I do with patients is, with the adjustments that I'll use, um, that, Specifically, I'll use the arthro stem, but in your case, I will put out on the next adjustment that I do, I'll go through and I'll post up some uh, some of the exercises that I have patients like that, uh, what to do at home, because there is definitely home therapy exercises that work really well with that. But my patients that do have that type of issue, one, 
they are coming in there getting the adjustments. The Y strap is amazing for uh, Dauger hump. Um, but then also, yeah, you know, there are the home exercises, especially a lot of getting extension in the neck um, is a good one. But I'll, I'll definitely list and uh, put up some, some at home stretches and exercises for you. Shelby is asking, what's your opinion on the Cairo and Cali who says he fixes everyone's problems with the neck adjustment? Um, I, I know exactly who you're talking about with that, and I know a lot of Kairos that do practice that way. So their philosophy when looking at the body is, you know, and, and kind, kind of similar to mine, but this is how I look at it. Um, you know, your brain controls the entire function of your body. So in order for, you know, your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, you know, or even a simple cut on your finger to heal, that message comes from the brain, goes down the spine, out the nerves, every organ, cell, and tissue in the body. How they look at it is, if there's nerve interference at C1, right at that atlas, if there's any type of nerve interference right here, the rest of the body will not function correctly because that message is getting stuck right here. So they feel if they clear out just that adjustment, the rest of the body will start to function better, which, yes, they are right. Um, technically, if you do adjust just that, just the neck, just that top, you know, atlas and axis, those top two bones, yes, you will get a great response. But how I look at it, if I'm able to adjust your neck, your upper back, your middle back, your lower back, your hips, your knees, your feet and ankle, and you feel that much better all over, why? If I know how to do it and I know what you're experiencing, why not help you know, expedite and speed up the process of your healing and adjust those multiple areas instead of just doing the neck? But you know, I would, you know, I'm not gonna bash on his technique. That's you know his philosophy and what he wants to do. Um, as a chiropractor, everyone has their you know their different ways and the different adjusting styles, but you know, I mean, I prefer how I do, and he's gonna prefer how he does. You know, no issue with that, but. Okay, so Clayton Shannon just wanted to let you know you're the hottest guy on YouTube. <laughs> you should be the Insta model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish, I'm, you know, definitely uh, a little bit chubby right now, but Ben, to be honest, actually, um, I'm down about 12 pounds from, it's been about a month now, so happy with being down 10 pounds, which is a good thing. I still am nowhere near what I was when I, you know, like graduated high school or even college. Um, but thank you for the compliment. Uh, <laughs> definitely love that. And uh, yeah, no, I don't really compare to the, to the Instagram model or to my wife. But, you are my Instagram model. Well, thank you, baby. Okay, so Arnold is saying, will you be in Georgia anytime soon, or are there any Kairos you'd recommend in Georgia? So Georgia, uh, I mean, if you're talking about Atlanta area, um, I'm, to be honest, I'm, all, I'm in and out of Atlanta all the time. Um, I have family there, my wife has family there. Uh, that state is definitely somewhere where we are quite frequently. Um, I. The only thing that I need to do with that, just like every other <laughs> state in America, is just getting my license activated in all those different areas. Um, now, granted, if you're, you know, if you're in the Atlanta, you know, the northern part of Georgia, you know, a drive out to Greenville is not the worst thing ever. Okay, uh, Goddess Love says you look very young. What's your age? I am 31 years old. So I know I do look young, I am in my 30s, you know, yeah, still lower 30s, but, you know, every year that I get older, I still tell everyone I'm 21, you know, I still, I still feel young at heart. Okay. Shelby says, my ankles pop all the time, what could that mean? Uh, well, I also have my right ankle that pops a lot, and I played soccer throughout, uh, throughout high school, and actually throughout my entire life. And it could be if it's around the outside of your ankle, the outside of the ankle, it's called the lateral malleolus. And you have specifically two tendons that wrap around the lateral malleolus, the lateral malleolus. It's the peroneus brevis and the peroneus longus tendon. And what happens, they go like this. They twitch and you can sit there and pop your ankles left and right and it gets really annoying. Um, and a lot of the times it's a sheath that would normally hold all those tendons in, like in place, 
bit and maybe a little loose and you get those two, two tendons that, that rub on each other. Okay, so David51835 says, Hey Joe, I have cervical arthritis and suffer with my shoulders and neck a lot. Can I go get an adjustment and would it help? Um, yes, I, I adjust a lot of patients that do have uh, any, like some type of degeneration in the neck. Uh, one thing that I always look at, especially if it's like a severe degeneration, one, I always look at and see where and at what level and make sure and check if there's any uh, osteophytes, any bone growth, any bone formation that is there that shouldn't be there. Um, and I always want to make sure and check to see you know, if there are any red flags. Because what could happen if it's that degenerated, what happens is your, your body starts laying more bone down and if your ligaments in that area start, you know, basically turning to bone, you don't want to do an adjustment and, and, and injure somebody. Okay, um, so Balwans Bassi says, I'm from London, would you treat me? I'll be in America for a few months and the cost. Yeah, if you're going to be in America, in the Greenville area, I would love to treat you. Um, definitely what I'll have you do, email me at uh, drjosephcipriano at gmail.com. Um, that's the best way for me to actually, you know, keep in touch and contact with you and we'll be able to get something set up. Okay, Javi G says, please come to Houston, Texas. Love your channel, Dr. C. Where exactly is your fr uh, doctor friend in Texas? Um, He's in Houston. Yeah, I know Dr. Alex Tubio. He is in Houston. Um, you can look him up uh, on his channel. He is... He's an Asian chiropractor. He's yeah, great guy, uh, great adjuster. He's, you know, I've kind of been trying to help him along with his YouTube channel as well. So uh, definitely look him up. Go yeah, check him out. Yeah, I know he is in Houston. I know he's more kind of, I think, in the downtown area, but not 100% sure. I haven't physically been to his office. Okay, UPS Brown says, I live in Florida. What type of chiropractic care should I look for? I'm a UPS driver just looking to get adjustments. Um, with things like that, so I always like a chiropractor who does a, like a full body adjustment. Um, you know, I'm not one, like I know one of the questions I answered were just getting the neck adjustment. Um, I, yes, it's great, it can help, but if I'm gonna go and if I'm gonna pay you know, for a visit, I would like my entire spine to be addressed, not just my neck and that's it. Or I wouldn't just want, you know, a soft tissue massage and that's it. If I'm gonna go to a chiropractor, I wanna make sure, I wanna get an adjustment, I, you know, I wanna feel, you know, a difference when I get up and off the table. So things that you're gonna wanna look at, um, especially if you're not coming to see me or, you know, someone, you know, that. All right, so the main thing, definitely look for experience. Look for, for you know, uh, years of being there. Definitely make sure and, and ask about their adjusting style. Um, full spine, Gonstead, uh, diversified. Those are all different types of techniques that I use a mixture of with my own adjusting. So definitely look at that. And like the Y strap, it's a Pettibon, P-E-T-T-I-B-O-N, Pettibon technique. So if you do know any, or find any air or any chirals that use Pettibon, you can always ask them if they use the Y strap. Bless you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Haya Panda says, question, when do you need to have an adjustment? What should somebody do if they have scoliosis? All right, when do you need, all right, so to be honest, I actually adjusted my son five minutes after he was born. Um, I, I started adjusting him literally, like I was saying, minutes from him being born. And the reason why is even, you know, from the, the process of birth, you know, there's a lot of pulling, um, you know, on a child, even a traumatic experience just like that with, you know, coming into this life. So I adjusted him right in the beginning. Now, granted, the adjustment is a lot different than what I adjust, how I adjust like my wife or any other adult patient. It is completely different than, yeah, than, you know, from an infant. Um, and then also the second part to that question. So when it comes to scoliosis, two things that I look at are if it's a, a functional scoliosis or a structural scoliosis. I wanna make sure and find out if 
there was, you know, that congenital, def you know, deformity that's causing it, or if not, you know, see what the underlying cause is behind it. Because if if somebody has, like, if they're a younger patient usually, and they have, you know, they have a scoliosis that isn't, you know, from a, a structural standpoint, a lot of the times, through the adjustments and through proper bracing and stretching, that can actually be reversed. I have seen it. I have done it myself with patients. Um, it takes a lot of work, not just from me, but work from the patient themselves too. Okay, so somebody's asking, why is there a section of your beard missing near your mouth? Uh, I think it's just the lighting. It could the lighting be. Lighting is hitting one spot. It could be, but I I don't grow the best hair right through like here and here. They it, noticed. It kind of like it, it comes in like patchy right there. I I don't know why my <laughs> facial hair grows like that. And then Wilfred said, how long did it did you grow out your beard? Oh my gosh, I've had, well, I've had my beard now for, I don't know, five or six years. I just, I'll trim it up throughout the times, but um, it's a little bit longer than what I normally keep it, but I want to try growing it out a little bit more than I usually do this time, and, uh, you know, to kind of check out a little bit different of a style. Okay, so Harry Heck says, why do you think most chiros just do a basic adjustment, not detailed unless you ask? I've never had shoulders or ankles adjusted in Arizona. Um, one, so if you have areas of that of concern of, you know, an extremity, an ankle, a wrist, a shoulder, whatever, definitely bring that up, especially day one, right from the get-go. So they'll do, a, you know, a full-blown examination on that area as well. Um, you know, everyone has learned it. Typically, chiropractors get into a routine, and that, that's one of the worst things ever is they get into a routine and they start doing almost like the same adjustments on people and they don't individualize things. Um, you definitely want to make sure, you know, everyone's body is a little bit different and they should be treated a little bit different. You know, adjustments that I'll do um, on my wife, you know, I find that, you know, when I adjust her neck, having her sit or stand works a lot better than having her, you know, lay face down or lay face up. It's, it's little things that you get to learn with uh, with different people in their bodies and learn how they respond better. So usually if you need or, you know, if you need different areas adjusted, first and foremost, call them out on it. Be like, hey, my pain is here. You know, uh, granted, yes, you're adjusting my neck. That's great. But can you do a wrist adjustment? If they literally refuse... I mean, it depends, you know, if you're responding well to care, that's great, you know, I would say keep up with it. But if someone refuses that they won't adjust the wrist or an elbow, they know how to do it. You know, you may have to just take your business elsewhere to another Cairo. Um, you know, I, I just, I know how I am and I would never want to be, you know, kind of under treated if, if, you know, if you can do something, why not do it to help me out? That's how I always look at things. I want to always better somebody's help. Okay, so Sage says, hi, can a tilted pelvis and herniated disc be fixed? I'm, a con I'm in constant pain, only have relief when reclining and am unable to walk except for short periods of time. Yeah, a lot of, so a lot of things, um, well, herniated disc is going to come with time, um, unfortunately. Uh, there are some low back techniques that can help with it. Um, there's one in particular called a Cox, C-O-X, not, you know, C-O-C-K-S, but it's C-O-X, Cox Flexion Distraction. That technique in general, it, um, it's a pumping technique and it, it helps bring fluid into the area. That is a great technique, especially dealing with uh, like low back herniations. So in your case specifically, I would search for somebody who does the Cox Flexion Distraction technique. Um, with a tilted pelvis, yes, you can you can help fix that, but also with adjustments, you're going to need to um, stabilize certain muscles and strengthen other muscles. So I would look into um, like it, it strengthening core muscles and um, relaxing other muscles as well. I can I can put up also some stretches and exercises to help with that because I know a lot of people do have tilted pelvis and with women, you know, that can cause quite a bit of issues, especially, you know, with pregnancy or uh, the ability to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Hoax RS said, what position did you play in soccer? Thanks for the fun and informative video videos. 
Um, well, it depends when we were lined up. Uh, if we were lined up like a flat back four or a stopper sweeper type thing, um, usually, you know, I was always defense. It depended where in defense I was at. Um, that I'm right footed, I was always put on the right side. And yeah, it was normally, sometimes I'd play sweeper if I was, you know, if we were doing that type of formation or sometimes it would be, you know, one of the two, you know, outside backs. Okay, so Wilfred Bosey said, so my thumb has been popping every time I point my thumb the other way. I need an explanation. Um, so the thumb has been popping. There's, there's a couple different things, um, you know, it could be a misalignment in, you know, in one of the metacarpals or, you know, one of the, the, the bones in the wrist joint. Um, there are some other even uh, dietary type issues that could be doing that. Um, it, it, those, are, those are tough. Those are tough questions to answer just because it's hard because I'm not doing like a full health, health history intake. And, you know, it, it could be, you know, dietary. It could be, you know, it could be even something that you've been doing at your job. Um, you know, like for me, like I deal with my own father that, that gets uh, trigger finger and he complains on how he gets trigger finger. But then, you know, come to find out he's golfing three to four times a week, which right then and there, you know, that's the complaint, you know, the, the cause of his trigger finger. So a lot of the times you may have to look back at your lifestyle and see what you're doing on, on why that has been created and comes about. Okay, Lonnie says, can you have an adjustment if L4 has been fused? Um, yeah, are you talking like a, a, a fusion, like like the, the like two rods that are being put in and you're fusing like L4, uh, like L4, L5, S1, or are you talking a surgery where you're just kind of like clearing out the frame and it's like, it, literally like you're just opening up the frame. And so there's two different types of technically if you get uh, any type of surgical, um, like surgery done on, on the L4, L5 area, or even anywhere in the spine, you've got to check because if you if you have any type of metal or anything like that. He said two rods, yes, L4 and L5. Okay, so two rods. So directly on those joints, you're not going to want to do an adjustment just because, um, Think about it. If if I was to do an uh, an adjustment, something powerful, and I was to break one of those rods or break a screw or break something, then that would mean a surgeon would have to re go back in and open that up, and you'd have to go back under you know under anesthesia and go back through a surgery again to fix something. So directly on that area, no. But what you can do as a chiropractor, if you have like you said your L four L five, you can still adjust your sacrum you know, your S1 going down, or you can still adjust from L3 going up. So you can still get those areas adjusted. You just want to make sure and, and not do that adjustment on L4, L5. Okay, Michael A wants to know, how can I find a chiropractor that does the Y-strap adjustment in my area? <sighs> you know, that's a tough one, and I've actually been thinking of doing some type of collaboration and getting, um, getting like a website type thing together. So I'm gonna have to get back on you a little bit with, with, a little bit with that one, but what I'm wanting to do is I am in the process of getting my own Y strap out there and then being able to market it to other Kairos. And then while I market it lists, those chiros that are a part of, you know, the y-axis distraction, just because I, I know the effects and how amazing the results are with using that technique, and I know not every one of my followers are from Greenville, South Carolina, so I want everybody to experience it, and I would love to reach out to other chiros, especially in your area, where you can tell them, like, hey, I would love this adjustment, um, you know, can you can you learn it from Dr. Cipriano? And I'd be happy to to teach any Cairo in your local area how to do it. Okay, and Lonnie just said thank you so much. That was very helpful. You're welcome. Okay, so um, how long is chiropractic school or the study? Uh, so chiropractic school is another four-year degree on top of your bachelor degree. Uh, 
typically, you know, you're going to be like three and a half years and then a half a year of a like intern slash residency type, type ordeal. Okay. Uh, my sister has a syrinx in her upper spine. Should she avoid chiropractors? Say that one again. I'm sorry. My sister has a syrinx in her upper spine. Um, I would, uh, that's a hard one. Um, a lot of the times, no, I've, I've, I've adjusted patients that had a, a shunt, you know, in their upper cervical area. Um, and you know, it's like a plastic tube just kind of going all the way down. So I have done adjustments with things like that. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely get x-rays taken. So you see exactly where, and just to make sure that there's, you know, no metal or anything like that. Okay. Michael A, how do you feel about inversion tables, good or bad? Um, inversion tables are good, but the only issue that I have with those is one, they're the typical inversion table that most people have, even like my parents have this, you know, old thing from like the 70s that lock you in at your ankles and flip you upside down. And a lot of the times you're getting a lot of tension from your ankles. Now, actually what I have at the office is our inversion table holds you in at the hips. So when you flip upside down, now you're getting that tension pulled out through the, that lumbar spine. Okay. And then JDS says, I'm a truck driver and I sat most of, most of the days driving. And I have a lot of lower back pain. I cannot find a good or decent car record. What should I do? Um, definitely when you're driving, if, you know, if you're on the road for you know, many hours a day, Definitely make sure and have some some type of lumbar support system. You definitely want to you know make sure that you're in good posture. What I said before, as a guy, make sure, especially with long driving, get that wallet out of your back pocket. Majority of people, you know, they have this really thick wallet that they sit on, and you got to realize, you know, one side is raised up here and the other one's down here. That's going to cause a lot of stress on that low back. So little things like that are um, things to watch out for. Always, you know, if you can stop, just say every three to four hours, you know, just get up, walk around, stretch a little bit. Um, those are definitely good things to do, especially with the long drive. Um, so I believe that is it. Uh, there were okay. a lot of people requesting you to come to their state okay. or uh, asking oh, a few more questions, but they were asking uh, whether, you know, or not, you know, people in their state, like as far as good chiropractors. So I just wanted you to kind of go over what you were going over earlier, just kind of saying what we're planning to do as far as like the states. Okay, so what what we are really looking into doing is um, we're, we're wanting to do more of a traveling uh, in multiple different states and what we need help with is we need to know, you know, where would I be needed the most. So definitely if you guys leave comments of, you know, city and state where you guys live you know i would love to get a like a tour set up and spend you know like a weekend in each different area so you know i can be able to you know be actually to you know meet you guys out there and actually help you with different issues and be there physically instead of you know trying to get people come out to greenville you know have me literally take maybe a tour around around the u.s i would not have an issue with that at all and we would, what, like broadcast it on our YouTube? Yeah, so how, how that would work, um, well, first off, I would definitely need to know what cities and where people are at and, you know, where it would, where it would be most beneficial for me to go. Um, you know, obviously more people that request me in a certain area is where I would go. Um, and then also, you know, I would have this up on my website and it would almost set up like a, like a tour type thing. And then, you know, I would let everybody know dates and times and I would be at certain locations. Okay, so Rhetorical Amusement said, one more question. I know you can just leave the live stream and search this question on YouTube, but my knee pops a lot. How can I fix the popping? <clears throat> well, a lot of times it, um, it may depend on, you know, is it from going up, upstairs, downstairs, things like that. It could be, and, and this is the thing because I'm not actually doing a like a complete, you know, examination. You know, there are different tests to tell whether it's uh, more of a, a meniscal injury or more, you know, if it's more of a ligament injury. Because it could be, you know, like a medial collateral ligament or a lateral collateral ligament, which are the either the inside of the knee or the outside, or it could be the actual meniscus. Which, if there's a tear or a partial tear. 
um, partial tears of the meniscus do tend to get a lot of um, like clicking and, and things like that. Uh, so it could be that, but like I said, it's hard to you know to just diagnose someone without actually running orthopedic tests and doing uh, the required work on that row. Billy Button says, Doc, I'll be in the Greenville area next month. I know you usually go low power on the Y strap adjustment on the first visit. Yep. If I came in and gave you my blessing, will you go full strength? <laughs> um, as, as long as, um, yeah, you know, there's no tumor, there's no fracture. Um, yeah, and, and if you'd like me to, yeah, I can use a little bit more force. Or what I could do, I could test out first um, do a very light pull, just see how your body responds to the light one. If you respond very well, you know, I can give it a few minutes and then I can go through and actually, you know, give it a, a pull where I would typically do for, you know, patients that I see, uh, you know, in longer term of care. So yeah, I, w I would be able to as long as, as long as your body can handle it. Mr. Bean says, what's causing pain on the outside of my left heel? Uh, outside of your left heel, technically, I mean, what should, what should you be talking about? If you're talking like on the bottom of the heel, more calcaneous type thing, um, it could almost be uh, like, a, like a pad irritation. Um, but if you're talking around like the ball of the ankle, um, I mean, there's a lot of little tendons. You have your pronius brevis, your pronius longus that are wrapping around the outside. And it, it could be one of those that are getting impinged. So it kind of it kind of depends on where exactly um, the issue is, and then also depending on, on on how or like what positive orthopedic tests come about with that. Okay, um, read that one right there. Um, I have an L four. Uh, this is from Aniket Cordy. Um, I have L four L five disc PVM. Can you assure me I will completely cure from this PBM? PBM, hold, um, hold on, what is that acronym? I'm, I'm a little uncertain. PBM, can you, can you type out what PBM is standing for real quick? As he types that, um, rhetorical amusement, just want to let you know your partner in crime is beautiful. My wifey? Of <laughs> course my wifey is beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Celine just sent a dollar. Thank you so much, Celine, for your donation. We appreciate that so much. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. Uh, okay, there was a few more questions. I'm sorry, I'm lost. Oh, wifey's getting a little lost. We're going to answer a couple more questions. Just getting a little um, tired. Just make sure everyone who is watching, um, I would love to know cities and states of, you know, if I was to do a tour where you guys would want me to go. So just, you know, the more comments I get on certain areas, those are definitely areas where I would go to. Okay, Lazy Gamer, uh, have you ever worked with someone with AS? Ankylosing spondylitis, of course go. I have. Um, I have a couple current patients that do have AS. I have some in the beginning stage and some, you know, in a more advanced stage. And especially people who have AS are in desperate need of chiropractic care. Because um, what's happening is your body literally is fusing together. And you know, typically it's starting down at your bilateral um, SI joints. So what will happen is everything will start fusing. And if you don't have motion in those joints, it will fuse quicker. So when you have a chiropractor, what a chiro can do is through adjustments and you know and getting better range of motion in those areas what can happen is you can cause areas to not fuse or at least you can slow down the process of AS. I'm so sorry is it Kellen? Kaleen? I'm sorry I butcher names on here like crazy. Okay so let me see. Jal said doc I'm 16 and my good Cairo said good in quotes uh, Cairo said, I have non-moving hip joints. I feel sharp pain down my legs randomly and down my arms. Non-moving hip joints. It's a very um, broad type term. Um, 
Usually when somebody's talking about hip joints, they're talking about the SI joints. So um, okay. SI joints are where your sacrum meets your hip is really what's happening. And those joints may not actually be getting good motion. So a lot of the times, you know, I'm gonna imagine that that doctor is doing uh, like a side posture type adjustment um, to help open up those joints and get better movement. But especially at 16 years of age, you know, you should not be having issues like that. So definitely make sure that they're taking x-rays so they're seeing exactly what's going on because yeah, things like that are not uh, normal at all, at the, especially at that age. Sterling Prout, how can I train myself to sleep on my back? I know I can search this <laughs> online, uh, but I would like your expert advice. Okay, uh, just an FYI, I am not a back sleeper. I wish I could be, but if you're not a back sleeper, the, the second best way to sleep, sleep on your side, have a pillow that you know is the width from like your ear to your shoulder. So sleep on your side, sleep in like the fetal type position and make sure you have that pillow here under your head and make sure you have a pillow in between your knees because you don't want your knees to, to cross, you don't want to mess up your hips. So if you can't sleep on your back, trust me, I'm the same way. Side sleep, fetal position, pillow under the head, but make sure it's thick enough because you don't want your head to be leaned like this. Or too much. Yeah, you know, yeah, or you don't want too big of a pillow where your head's like that. You want to keep your neck, you know, straight and aligned, and then also, you know, a pillow in between your knees as well. Okay, uh, Layton Royal. I live in uh, North Carolina. I want to come to you for my first adjustment. Email me at um, drjosephcipriano at gmail.com. Um, I'll be able to to really respond to you personally and and just kind of give you, uh, let you know just everything what it entails. But yes, I would I would love to uh, to be the you know first person ever adjust to. Okay, Locke says I know I'm joining a little late and I'm not sure if you answered this, but how long did your education take? Uh, so the education was on top of my bachelor degree. So obviously it took me well it actually took me about four and a half years to get my bachelor degree and then. To do my doctorate of chiropractic, that was another four-year program. It was uh, three and a half years of school and then another, uh, another half year of uh, an intern residency type program. Okay, so Herbert uh, said, besides adjustment, what is best day-to-day -day for herniated T7, T8? Herniated T7, T8, so that's an awkward area because you're talking like, you know, mid-thoracic spine. Um, very strange spot to actually get a herniation. I could imagine something like that is almost hurting you with like a deep breath, like deep inspiration, deep expiration, um, just because you know your lungs filling up and you know and breathing in and out. Um, that is a very awkward area. I would make sure, you know, especially with that, with any type of herniation, you want to get mobility to the joints. You want to, you know, you don't want them to just sit stagnant. Um, you know, a combo, you know, of ice and heat are definitely good. Um, and even, even adjusting wise is a little tough. You know, you don't want to do too forceful of moves. Now, granted, a decompression in the, like, like mine or like um, uh, the ring dinger type move, doing a decompression going, you know, from the neck going all the way down would be a great adjustment for that in particular. So DB said, why do Kairos and doctors in general have such hairy arms? <laughs> <laughs> um, He's Italian. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm, does that explain Yeah, that? I'm Italian. I've got hair on my arms, on my chest, on my face, my head. You know, it would be on my back if I didn't, you know, trim it. Like, it's, I don't know why I have hair everywhere. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you, Mooney. Mooney said, y'all are such a beautiful couple. And I'm probably butchering that most likely. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Billy Buttons, Doc, do you recommend for guys to not have a wallet in one of their back pockets Hun like they tend to? 100%, 100%, 100%. If you have a wallet, um, technically what I have, I have just uh, like almost like a little magnetic thing and I have like my ID and like a couple like credit cards in that. And it's very thin, like literally like the size of like my finger, really thin. And I'll hold on to that. But I see people that have like these big wallets just filled with junk. Do not keep the wallet in your back pocket at all. Put it in your front. Okay. 
Okay, and Lazy Gamer's asking, can I ask what a first visit would be like for somebody with severe AS? Uh, somebody with severe AS, uh, you know, obviously I'm going to go through orthopedic tests. I want to get range of motion because I know somebody with severe AS, you're going to be very stiff. You're not going to have, like this right here is, is not something that you'd be able to do. Bending forward, bending back, like you're going to be more str like stiff. So trying to get range of motion is going to be the main thing. Um, I I will still do all the all the adjustments as I can. Um, a side posture, rotational, some things I won't be able to do, but the Y strap I will still do on an AS patient. Um, that is really going to help. You'll definitely get a lot of movement, um, and I'll still do you know like your normal thoracic and cervical adjustments as well. There's just some things that aren't really going to move, and I, and I know if you, with having severe AS. I know that you already know that your range of motion is nowhere near what it was, that you're a lot stiffer, you know, just your mobility in general is not anywhere near it is. So um, definitely want to work on mobility and, and flexibility. All right, so last question for tonight. Okay. Uh, D. Laverty, do you watch slash follow fellow chiropractors? Um, I, I will occasionally watch you know some adjustments in the past I, I watched more but I have like now I have to be honest not enough free time with with things you know with with having you know the office in Greenville um, with trying to do uh, you know more videos where I can post um, I don't really have as much time you know when I when I do have free time I you know want to spend time with my wife and relax and trust me, I, I already get yelled at a ton by her because I'm always on my phone or on the computer doing some some type of social media type thing. So I know, I never feel like I get enough of you. <laughs> I, I know. So so yeah, I have seen some chiros, but I, I I don't really watch as much anymore. Okay. Um this is hilarious, so I'm just gonna okay. say it. I know I said the last question, but uh Hilo King said I think my comment didn't appear. Would you go down to Mexico and do a session on a drug lord, even if he paid quite a bit, uh, quite a lot? <laughs> um, I mean, I I don't discriminate. <laughs> um, you know, black, white, Asian, pink, purple, polka dot. I you know I don't care who you are, what you are. You have a spine. Drug lord or Mother <laughs> Teresa? Yeah, drug lord or Mother <laughs> Teresa. You know, I'm I'm not gonna discriminate at all. Um, I mean, as long as, you know, we can guarantee my safety that nothing will happen to me, then, then of course, yeah, I have no issue with that at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are just thank you, thanking you for this session. Lonnie said, very informative video I've seen uh, on YouTube in quite some time. Thank you all so much. And apparently you're a lucky man. Your well, thank you. Of course, I know that I'm thank a lucky you. man. Thank you. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. One more, Mike. I know you said last question, but can you give me a chance? Big fan of your channel. Okay. I have herniated discs in my L3, L5, and my chiropractor and yoga are working, but should I get surgery? Um, so, and, and to be honest, I have had patients where I would have to recommend surgery in some cases. Um, I look at surgery as being in, in ultimate last case scenario if there is nothing else that that can be done you know naturally um then if, if that literally is last case then it is and you know you may have to go that route but if it was my own self i'm going to try any type of things that i can do first to avoid surgery because you got to realize once you get a surgery, you know, it, it can't be reversed, it can't be done, especially if you had to get some type of metal rods put in your back. Well, now for the rest of your life, you can never get a chiropractic adjustment, you know, between L3 and L5 because of that. So I would always look and see if there is, between chiropractic, uh, maybe different techniques. I have talked about a little bit earlier today um, in a herniated disc, a good technique, or re actually a really good technique for that, it's called Cox Flexion Distraction. That's C-O-X Flexion Distraction. So in your area, if you were able to, you know, like Google search um, Flexion Distraction Cairo in, you know, whatever area you're at and find that specific type of adjustment, 
that may be a very um, beneficial adjustment for you and that may be able to, now granted I'm saying may because I don't know exactly you know, your health history. I, you know, I, there's a lot of orthopedic tests, a lot of things that I haven't personally done, but I would look into other things first. But if it's the last case scenario, you've done the, you know, Cairo route, you've done PT, you've done yoga, you've done, med like, I don't care, you've done everything and there's nothing, then it comes to, you, you know, you may have to have the surgery, but always make, sh make sure and try and do every option available. Even as crazy as it may sound, do it because once you get that surgery, there's no, no turning back. All right, so you guys, uh, we will try to do a Q&A at least a couple times a month. Um, definitely with, you know, with the amount that we've seen in the attraction today, I will definitely try to do um, Q and A's and every, I mean, Monday night is a great night. I can, uh, I can definitely start doing Monday evenings and maybe even start doing them once weekly if you guys would like. Just let me know, I have no problem in doing that. Because there's always just so many questions that go unanswered mm -hmm. in the comments yep. below videos because there's just so many. Yep. So yeah, if, if you guys would like, I would have no issues in, in coming on Monday night and uh, and doing a Q&A session, just, you know, if there's any questions that you guys may have, you know, I have no issues at all, you know, to help people out. All right, you guys, thank you for joining. I'm Mama Sip. Thank you, and I'm Dr. Joseph Cipriano. Have a good night. Have a good one, guys.